but so the research on exploring changing attitudes towards Afro-Caribbean beliefs in Jamaica, I study it's a study of the socio-political, religious, and cultural influences. Now, in Jamaica, there has historically been a negative perception towards African and indigenous spiritual practices, religious beliefs, customs, and faith that draw influences from urban Indian heritage or African traditions. Let me say that again. In Jamaica and the Caribbean, and in many Caribbean communities, there has been historically, historically, there has been a negative perception towards African and indigenous spiritual practices. That's a premise. Religious beliefs, customs and faiths that draw influences from urban Indian heritage or African traditions. Rastafarianism, Obia, Voodoo, Pokomania, or Pocket Church, revivalists and Muslim beliefs have often been marginalized, deemed as fringe, demonic, and unpopular, juxtaposed against the inherited traditions from European colonialism. I hope you understand this point. Now, the Judeo-Christian faith, such as Roman Catholicism, Protestantism, and Evangelicalism, the Judeo-Christian faith, such as Roman Catholicism, Protestantism, and Evangelical Evangelicalism, has been favored and considered closer to the truth and the ideal. However, notice I'm taking my time because I want you guys to delve into this, what we are doing, what I'm saying here. However, in the 21st century, in the 21st century, with increased exposure, awareness, critical thinking, and a more liberal lifestyle, particularly among the younger generation, it is crucial to investigate whether attitudes towards Afro-Caribbean beliefs are changing. This is important for this class because I don't believe that this class has really delved into studies of this magnitude. We have only made assumptions, okay? We have only made assumptions, but as academics at this level, we are moving beyond assumptions. And we also want to conduct our own research and our own study. And I believe that this, is, this should be part and parcel as academics as theologians at the Jamaica Theological Seminary. We should lead the way, we should lead the charge. So the study is aiming to explore the shifting attitudes. It makes an, okay, the shifting attitudes of Jamaicans and the factors contributing to these changes, considering demographic variables such as age, location, group, educational levels, income status, political affiliation, denominationality and religious beliefs. So these, th these are the research objectives. These are the research objectives. Uh, the main objectives of the course are as follows. main objectives of the course are as follows. I know I'm taking my time because I want you guys to see, understand what we're doing and where we're going and the arguments, the rationale, okay? So the main objectives the main objectives of this study are as follows. One, or A, to examine if Jamaican attitudes towards Afro-Caribbean beliefs has evolved over time because I made some assumptions. I said, this is what Jamaican beliefs or attitudes was or were, but this is what has happened. And we are saying that, is it changing or is it not changing? 
So we're going to examine if so, the, so we want to examine if Jamaican attitude towards Afro Caribbean beliefs have evolved over time. Two, we want to determine if specific demographic factors, specific demographic factors, influence changing attitudes, including what? What are we talking about? Demographics, location, age group, educational levels, income status, political affiliations denominationality and religious beliefs so and fourthly to investigate the potential role of socio-political factors religious influence influences education pop culture pop culture popular culture travel experiences and exposure Ex not that word exposure especially i did so a research with a previous Caribbean thought class. And I asked the question about their exposure. Where do they get most of their, or how much time do they spend on local media as against foreign media? The majority of the class, or 90 or majority of the class spend, spends most of their screen time watching foreign media. Okay, and of course we talk about penetration and the openness. Okay, foreign movies, the HBO, the CNN, so on and so forth, as against so exposure. Not only that, tra um, familial travels, familial travels, the brain drain. Lot of lot of you have family who live who travel the U.S. and you guys travel a lot as well. Exposure. So exposure and exposure in shaping attitudes towards Afro-Caribbean beliefs. D, in terms of we're still on research objectives. D, to explore perceptions, to explore perceptions of African religious practices as cultic or occult and their impact on attitudes. Now, if, say for example, I think I did mention at the last class, some people, some even go as far as to say that Jehovah's Witnesses are cultic. What is a cult? A cult of Christianity, sorry, a cult of Christianity. We talk about a cult. It must be differentiated between the occult, okay, the occult, as against a cult. A cult is something that claims to be what it is not, so to speak. But who said it is not? The community that they claim to be part of. The people within the community say, no, you are not. In other words, an occult is, uh, they say, for example, they say that Jehovah's Witnesses or even Roman Catholic. Even when people go as far, some Jamaicans go as far as to say Roman Catholics, Jehovah's Witnesses, Church of Latter-day Saints, um, so on and so forth. They said they're a cult of Christianity because they claim to be Christians, but they do not accept or embrace what Orthodox, the word Orthodox is important. Not, I mean, I talk, we're not talking about the Greek Orthodox, the Greek Orthodox Church. What Orthodox, the authority, the authority of Christianity, the ascent, they don't, what they say, they say that they have not accepted the essential tenets of the Christian faith. That is what separates a cult of Christianity and those that are Orthodox Christianity. Okay, those, okay. So people go as far as the Roman Catholics and Christians, they are cults because they have purgatory and life after death and sorry, I kind of, sorry, purgatory. They have the apocryphal books and some churches don't have the apocryphal books. That goes without saying. And people come up with arguments about the apocryphal books. The apocryphal books weren't inspired. Who says, so? oh, the church fathers didn't accept them. But which church fathers? There are some church fathers that did accept them. Okay. But it, for some people, it doesn't suit the theology or the foundation or the kind of church that they are building the kind of institution that they so, so in order to protect their institution 
then okay there are some books in the bible that doesn't make sense to them so let's we, so we we can't have the apocryphal books in our church because it doesn't speak to what we are speaking we don't believe in purgatory so that those books and though and those books weren't inspired by god it's, we call that circular reasoning you start from the you start at the goal and you go back to the beginning anyway but people don't accept the apocryphal books as part of the scripture when i say for example i went to jts of course part i mean an evangelical school but i was ordained by a protestant church who and the apocryphal books is was part of my form my ministerial formation or utcwi as against to make a theological seminary but anyways that's a different issue that we're not talking about that right now let's look about let's look at our methodology our methodology what is your methodology one participant selection a diverse sample of jamaican individuals representing different demographics including location talking about urban city and rural and age group 13 to 24 25 to 34 35 to 44 45 to 54 55 to 64 65 and above educational levels income and income status and political affiliation jlp or pnp or no status denominationality slash religious affiliation protestant anglican roman catholic seventh day adventist evangelical revivalist poco mormon universal and religious beliefs rastafarianism judaism satanism notice that with satanism islam nation of islam christianity atheism deism other will be included in terms of our methodology questionnaire development a research questionnaire will be designed which we have already designed will be designed to collect both quantitative and qualitative now what howard was speaking of is the quanti the qualitative aspect of the research when you conduct research it is good to not only have a, uh, to provide uh, not only to do qualitative but you also want uh, quantitative which is yeah, qual quantitative true and false and so on but you want qualitative as well you want them to you want to you want them to go outside of what you have given them as well a research questionnaire will be designed to collect both qualitative and quantitative data the questionnaire will cover the following sections so the the, the, the questionnaire that we have in is, is two pronged there are people who will not maybe will not complete the quantitative aspect of it um but that's fine we will collect as much whatever they give us qualitative or quantitative we are still it is still necessary for the research um the, the questionnaire will cover the following sections demographics we will gather information on gender age location educational level income status section two religious affiliation identify participants religious beliefs in denominationality section three we'll look at attitudes towards afro-caribbean beliefs in, in the sense that we're going to measure participants a level of agreement with statements reflecting attitudes towards afro-caribbean beliefs so i think how would i understand what you're talking about but when you go back when when you go back and look at the questions we're asking them all they have to do is say they have to say they um, they have to say they agree or they agree strongly agree they're neutral or whatever so they're not writing the only part you have to write it out is the bottom section which i would which is the quantitative so I, and, and we're going to get to that so i know what howard is talking about but the first document we sent you we didn't put the boxes in there so you might have been a bit confused and think you're going to write stuff out right there no majority of the paper is not writing out most of it is sticking whether to say you're we provide you with some statements and you say your agreement level the agreement level will help to formulate quantitative analysis now there is another section which is the qualitative part which you may or may not have to write but we would love for them to write some people will and some people won't that is fine okay so um so section three is 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 the is we will measure their attitudes we will measure we will measure the participants level of agreement with statements reflecting attitudes towards afro caribbean belief and section four now is what howard is section four now howard is the additional information where you provide participants and by the way rolliams did some work on it 
as well. And what I did, I updated it because we didn't have the boxes and um, volumes. So section four is additional information where we provide participants an opportunity. They don't have to, but we provide them with an opportunity to share their personal experience, perceptions, and factors influencing their attitude towards Afro-Caribbean beliefs because they may say they agree with something but they wanted to flesh it out some more and they may do that within that in section four. Say for example, some researchers, some participants are different than others. Me as a participant, when I complete a questionnaire, I love to write. So I want to write, I want to write, trust me, I, I want to write. So, and that's great. I want to see what people are saying. Now section five is optional information where you get optional where you get to explore participants' political affiliation and any additional thought they may have noticed. So section four and section five. Section five is optional. Section four, they can provide additional information, but we can still conduct the study whether or not they provide, give us back the questionnaire and they don't complete section four or five. Okay, Be all right. And then we go to sex because what we will do when we present our reporting and our analysis Okay, you will include that in your analysis, okay, in terms of how the participants answered, how many of them participated in the quantitative aspect of the study. Of the 100 people we did, 40% did all, 50% completed all of the question, 10% only did, 10% did only the qualitative part, or 50% only did the qualitative part, another 10% only did the quantitative or whatever, you know what I mean? So we could do, we're going to do that in your analysis. Section C is data collection. Section C, the questionnaire, for, and by the way, some of you may have, I remember when I was at JTS, my final, I have to do a capstone project at the end of the, at the especially if you do counseling. I don't know if the theology students do that, but the counseling students did that. The counseling students had to do a, or social work, they had to do an independent study or a capstone project, a research. This is how you would do the research. So some of you might be doing research. By the way, you can use that research. This research that we are doing, you could do it. If you are actually working on an end of report, or you might want to be doing something for your own church, okay, or for the police force, this is good. You could be saying, okay, I want to, because this is good, you want an understanding because it, get, it helps us to understand our attitudes towards certain classes, our behavior towards certain classes of people, and so on and so forth. Um, ethical consideration. So this is a good study that you could also utilize in your own police, in the police force. You can take this study and run with it. You can update it, expand it, each of you. This is for you too. This is our project. This is our lab. We control this. We are the principles of the research, okay? We will, I will share the results with you. I will report to you the findings. Even after the class, you guys, we will still have the WhatsApp group and we will continue to share things with each other, bounce things off each other and so on and so forth. If you guys want to run with this study, this is our study. You take ownership of it, okay? But anyway, let's continue. So the data analysis will be, now data analysis, quantitative data, quanti when you do data, you have quantitative and qualitative. Quantitative, in terms, when we talk about the data analysis, we're talking about the quantitative data will be analyzed using statistical methods, including descriptive analysis and inferential statistics. We act, and then the, so that's the the quantitative part of the questionnaire where you where, where you where we where we ask them about their their um, their agreement level of agreement to certain state questions that we ask and so on and so forth. Now, the qualitative part, the writing part, so the analysis will be conducted in two prongs, the quantitative part, and then the qualitative data will undergo thematic analysis to identify recurring patterns and themes and insights. So the writing part that we give the you on the questionnaire, there may be some recurring themes when we plug it into to the to the reporting tool that we am with which we am going to plug it into there's an, an analytic and an analysis tool we plug it into it and then the computer is going to flag some recurring points some recurring themes which will give us and it's going to be based on thematic thematic themes overall thematic analysis to identify recurring in other words 
themes or statements that re repeat itself itself okay and that will prov use to provide insights what are our ethical considerations the study will adhere to ethical guidelines ensuring participant anonymity informed consent and voluntary participation the collected data will be securely stored and used solely for research purposes we're not using it to out anybody or anything okay we're not asking people to write their names on the research paper we don't want any names on the research paper it's random so they complete it and just send it back you give it back to the researcher to myself we put it together in a in a quantitative and qualitative um data analytics tool that will generate our results for us the conclusion by examining changing attitudes towards afro caribbean beliefs in jamaica by again by examining changing attitudes towards afro caribbean beliefs in jamaica the study aims to do what to shed light on the impact of socio political factors religion education pop culture travel experiences and exposure on the evolving percept and evolve you know what evolving means the changing the growing perception the growing but evolving is not just changing because i could have used the word change okay because you can evolving is different to evolve is to to change in a particular direction so so i could have used the word change but i decided to use the word evolving perception of jamaicans which is a better word means changing perceptions either in the positive or the negative changing perception upwards or downwards so i use the word evolving so by examining changing attitudes towards afro-caribbean beliefs in jamaica the study aims to shed light on the impact of social political factors religion education pop culture travel experiences and exposure on the evolving perceptions of jamaicans now the findings will do what it will contribute to a deeper notice you know we are doing this study for what purpose to not only are we, we are not only are not only will this study examine changing attitudes as it relate as it relates to the evolving perceptions of jamaicans but the study that we are doing that we are leading and we are the leaders of the study we're the principals okay and i will publish these findings and my name is not the only one that will be on the on the publication i want every one of you to be on the publication i am being honest when i say something i mean it my job is to share what i have learned my job is strategic i come here i learn i give it back to you guys to my country it's all strategy i'm okay that's between me and you guys so i learn i give it back so i come i learn i go back to jamaica set up shop yes that is that's okay by the way i we want to develop and we want to strengthen our research capabilities our research capabilities and so on even from the at the as evangelical at an evangelical school at jts and so on okay this is how we do study this is how we we're going to do we're working on a caribbean thought and theology journal and this is going to be part of caribbean thought and theology journal written besides that the findings will contribute to a deeper understanding of how societal changes influence cultural attitudes cultural attitudes promoting inclusivity tolerance and cultural heritage pres preservation and cultural heritage preservation this is good this is a good study sage journal asked me to do a a book a publication to edit a publication and to give them and to and to give them a proposal that's what this is about too all of this is part of that sage journal an international publication they want me but you know to be honest i want us to do our own journal the caribbean thought and theology journal 
okay, Caribbean Thought and Theology Journal and the findings, okay, but I, I'm not sure whether we're going to publish it with Sage or we're going to do it for ourselves, but we'll know. But the, the findings will contribute to a deeper understanding of how societal changes influence cultural attitudes, promoting inclusivity, tolerance, and cultural heritage preservation. Ultimately, the research aims to do what? To encourage a more informed and respective. Notice I say, the, the, okay, ultimately, earlier I had a big debate with my twin brother, Ricardo, about abortion. About abortion. We didn't have a discussion about that as theology students, but we, we won't do that at all. My aim in this course was to zero in on this Afro Caribbean. This Afro-Caribbean and this African spirituality, because you guys get enough of theology and systematic theology from a Eurocentric perspective. Okay, we were talking about abortion, and I talk about the fact that, um, and um, he is my twin brother is against abortion. Sorry, no, he is for abortion, while I was arguing against abortion, and. The argument for or against his argument is interesting because he talked about it's the woman's body and the woman must have a right to do what she wants with her body. It speaks to the issue of free will. It speaks to the issue of free will, freedom of free will, a right to do what you do with your own body. And I said, yes, I am for freedom of expression. I am for free will. But even God, even God placed restrictions on himself. Okay? Even God placed restrictions on him. I said, there are some, say, for example, the, yeah, if you look at it like that, then yes. But let us push it, push it to its logical end, Ricardo. The issue of life. It's not one man's prerogative, but it is a community per prerogative. We all have a responsibility to preserve and to protect life. That, okay, we have a prerogative to protect life. And so human beings, say for example, it, it, we have, a, okay, say for example, suicide. Don't we have a, it's, it's, we have laws against suicide. We have laws about taking your own life. Okay, let's talk about euthanasia. Euthanasia is killing someone who is near death. And so we advance it by killing them by whatever. We have laws against that. We have, okay, say for example, you are in Jamaica, you drive on the, we drive on what? The right? What do we, what side of the road we drive on again in Jamaica? Left or the left? Left. 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 Okay. What if I say, I, I want to drive on the right? I get to do with, okay. You put other people's life in danger. In, in other words, you, you affect life. You affect life. So we have laws as a community. As a community, we have a responsibility to preserve and protect life. Okay, and so we have laws against anything that may endanger your life and the life of others. It's not like smoking a cigarette. It's not like smoking weed. It's not like anything like that or gambling or whatever. It has, okay, the issue of, uh, we make laws about that. Okay, that is different. But when it comes on to the preservation of life, I believe it goes beyond the whims and fancy of one individual all of us have a responsibility to protect life and to promote life and to preserve life. Now, we don't choose. We didn't choose how life come about. We come into this world with, okay, and life happens in a certain way. We have, we have okay, that's how it is. Okay, a man and a woman have sex and the, and, and, and the woman produces of that is just how it goes. And I, and I, okay. So I said to, just as though we have laws to present, prevent individuals from endangering themselves and the, the lives of others so as to protect and to preserve life, 
as a community as well, we have a responsibility to protect and preserve that life that was generated within the womb based on the biology of how God has intended life to start and happen. Right. God, okay, God, God is than that with which nothing greater can be conceived or imagined. That, okay, God is omnipresent. God is omnipotent. God is omniscient. He can, he, is, he can do whatever, but guess what? God places restrictions and limits on himself, we say. We say that. Everybody is free, but everybody is not free. So if we are to argue in, if we were to look at the issue in those lens, then we can understand what, so we cannot, okay, we have to look, we, people constantly make it about the woman and the woman's free will, but it's not only about that. It goes beyond that, okay? The biology of life requires that the woman bears the child. The biology of life requires that the man and the woman comes together to impregnate the woman and to start life. Yet it is the woman who has that responsibility. But yet still, but yet still, if the woman decides, if if the if the man says he doesn't want to have the child, and the woman has the child, the man is still responsible. But yet the woman can say, okay, I don't want to have the child, but the man does is cannot decide. That is a contradiction and a paradox, and it's quite ambiguous. No. After having that discussion, he said, oh, I understand where you're coming from. I said, yeah, that's good. I know I understand where you are coming from, too. You make a powerful point. But okay, but you, I also want you to understand the other side. The other side is not just looking at, it's not just taking away the right of the woman. People's rights or freedoms are taken away in order for us to progress life. So it goes beyond that. And, you know, and now we agree to disagree but the important thing is the research aims to we had we were a, we had a respective dialogue surrounding abortion that allowed us to understand each other and where each other was coming from ultimately so this research aims to encourage a more just as always, so this particular research looking at afro-caribbean beliefs in jamaica provides that possibility provides that as well an opportunity to encourage a more informed and respective dialogue surrounding Afro-Caribbean beliefs in Jamaican society. It is important for us to have this, discu this discussion. I said to you when I was younger, my mom, my, I mean, I grew up in a, in, a, in, a, in a kind of community that looked down on Rastas. In fact, they don't want Rasta, if you come close to a Rasta, they, they, say, they used to call Rasta nasty, Rasta dirty. I used to walk, um, I used to visit one of my friends in Brayton and there was a, and, and, and at the top of his block, I had to walk, to get off the taxi and I walk, walk out to pass this house. And the house was, had all these um, candles and colored stuff and burning a revivalist, the Pokemania people or <laughs> revivalist people. And I, we were nervous and they said, walk far. And we used to walk on the block we would walk on the other side and go around and we were nervous and we looked at them weird okay and even today some in the mainline churches think that they are better than those in the other kind of those who have more african kind of uh, experience in their church so of course so this is important to um, to to uh, conduct this study to find out has that changed for me it has i don't see rastas as nasty dirty people no more okay <laughs> I mean, I used to, I'm being honest. Oh, no. I came. Go ahead, Chantel. Oh, sorry, sir. Okay. Right, you know, anyways. So the questionnaire that we have. So this is the questionnaire. So question one, I said, select. You have your gender. You see the, um, did you guys see this? Are you looking at my screen, guys? Yes, sir. All right, Williams, Karen Howard. Sir, you see the screen? I, I can't look down at the screen. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yes, sir, I'm, I see your screen. I'm, I am, I am, I'm I am, sir. I'm seeing it. I'm driving, I'm driving, driving home, sir. Yes. All right. So, Howard, 
Um, okay, so your part that you're talking about, you notice so we're doing the qualitative and quantitative in one questionnaire. There's one section where they don't write out, they just tick. And the other part okay. is and the other part is optional. So and I, let me yes. go through the questionnaire. So William, you see the updates that we did to the questionnaire? Do you like it? William? The update, no, I didn't. When do you do that today? Early this morning or oh no, maybe if you send it, I have not read it as yet. I said no, but are you seeing it on the screen now? You see, oh sure, I screen. do, I do. Because yes, I didn't sir. have the boxes. So to the yes. first one, yes, I see it. Great. So so this is the questionnaire part. When you give out, when you hand out the questionnaire to people, um, you can hand out the just the questionnaire part. So when I send send you the questionnaire, I send you the questionnaire and I also send you the rationale, the proposal, the essay. That's for you guys. Just in case for you guys, if people have questions and you and so on, you can look at it and provide the answers to them. Or if they want a copy of it, you may send them the copy, but we don't want them to steal the work. But so this is the questionnaire section one demographics. We ask them to select an option by placing X in the box that best describes you. Gen the first one is gender, male, female, other, or prefer not to say. The second one, age, and then they can choose which one. Then the third one is location. And if you're in a city, you can specify the city you're in. Um, educational level, primary, all age, high school, associate degree, bachelor's, master's, doctoral degree, other. And then this, the fifth income, low. Thank you so much, guys. I see you guys help me with that. Low income, middle income, or high income, um, you can choose. And, um, and I, Volumes and Chantel helped us to figure out what was low, middle, and high. Um, selection two, religious affiliation. You get sp um, specify your religious affiliation and you can choose um, Protestant, Roman Catholic, blah, 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 blah. Some of them might sound repetitive because some people, I notice a lot of people don't understand, even people that go to churches, or a lot of people don't understand the difference between religious and denominationality. So I just combine them into one. So you might see I put Roman Protestant and I put Anglican, Methodist, Brethren, Church, etc. Um, and then you have Roman Catholic. And then under that you have Evangelical, Evangelical, Pentecostal, Brethren, Seventh-day Adventist, Apostolic. And then you have revivalist or Zionist, um, Poco or Pocomania, the Mormon church, Mormons. Um, the, say, for example, these are consider, many Christians consider, Orthodox Christians consider Mormons cultic, Universal Church of Latter day Saints cultic, Rastafarians. Um, they would, okay, that would be more uh, a religion. And now I'm learning, and you're learning that there are many different different kind of rasters it's not just you have a different this is you have different kinds of christians or denominations you have the same thing happen with rasters then of course judaism and in the, even in judaism you have different kind of judaism just so you know that different kind of judaism you have the Messi you have messianic jews as well you have orthodox jews you have liberal jews you have secular jews okay so even you have different kinds of jews then you have islam and you have different islam you have the nation of Islam as against Islam, okay? <laughs> and that's why I have the nation of Islam and Islam. Um, and I put Christianity, non-specific, atheist, deist, and then nature worship. You have some people who worship energy and nature. And then, of course, Hindus, Church of Scientology, charismatic. Um, some charismatic can go into evangelical. But some charismatic people don't think, believe that they are, so I separated it. Greek Orthodox Church, um, the Church of Latter-day Saints, and other. Okay. okay. In your exam, I may ask you um, to identify, to name, identify five churches or religious groups or whatever. I may ask you that, um, Caribbean religion or so on. Um, section three, attitudes towards Afro-Caribbean. Please indicate your level of agreement with the following statements by placing the number in the box corresponding. Sorry, sorry before you move, sir, we don't repeat something two times. 
Church of ah. Latter Day Saints is Mormonism, the same church. Number 20 is the same as Mormonism. Mormon is number uh, six. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Church of six Latter Day Saints is the same thing. Yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. Six and 20 is the same. That's fine. Um, we'll let it stay though. Okay. Yes. Because some, some moments don't some of the some of the some people who practice Mormonism in Jamaica don't realize don't don't realize that it's also part of the Church of the Latter day Saints. Yes. Some, so we do that. I'm still gonna let that stay because if somebody tick six and tick uh twenty. For our analysis, we combine some of these things. So the, the analysis part, some of these things are combined because um, so but what we will we will correct this part before because the what we're gonna okay, fine. What I'll do, I'll put Mormon, Mormons slash church of Latter-day Saints. So we'll correct that. Okay, thank you for that. We will correct it. Section three, attitudes towards Afro-Caribbean beliefs. Thank you for that, Rolliams. Yes. Um, please indicate your level of agreement with the following statement by placing the number in the box corresponding with your answer. Um, one, strongly agree. Two, disagree. Three, neutral. Four, agree. Five, strongly agree. So the first one is Afro-Caribbean spiritual practices have a positive influence on Jamaica culture and should be respected. You could put one, two, three, four, or five. Jamaicans should embrace their Afro-Caribbean heritage and traditions. Towards uh, attitudes towards Afro-Caribbean beliefs have changed positively over time. Afro-Caribbean beliefs should be given the same respect. Exposure to different cultures and beliefs has influenced my perception. Jamaican youth are more accepting. So it's a political fact, so on and so forth. So we will ask them those questions. Um, I, I think I should add some more questions to this. I should, I should also add, I'm going to add some more because I'm going to add, I'm going to, include some Afro-Caribbean beliefs um, and, um, and rate the following, okay? I should add to that, but and then you go to section four. Section four is in your own words, describe your understanding of perception of African beliefs. In your own words, describe your understanding of perception of African beliefs, okay? You could, um, so that's additional information. We hope that they will complete that, but if they don't, that's fine. But that one, you just write in, you describe your, in your own words. It could be one sentence. Well, African Caribbean beliefs is not important or something to that effect. But the, the thing is, you, they can, whatever they write as it relates to their understanding of Afro Caribbean beliefs. So it's an open ended question, and we're asking them to write in their own words, their understanding or perception of Afro-Caribbean beliefs. The second one is, have you personally experienced any changes in your attitude towards Afro-Caribbean beliefs? If yes, please explain. Hold up. Uh, I need to add, okay, this is not finished. I just noticed that, wow, hold up. Is that how I, is that how I also have the question? They, they will have to write, are there any specific events, experiences, or factors that have influenced your attitudes towards Afro-Caribbean beliefs? Um, do you believe that Afro-Caribbean beliefs should be recognized and protected as part of Jamaican cultural heritage? Please explain. So, no, that part, okay, that probably, that's the section that um, you are at, you're talking about. That, that part is important. We just want them to write one or two sentences. Um, I think that's the part that Howard was alluding to, but that part they can um, they may have they can write it or not, but we hope that they will write because that's important a qualitative aspect of the study, and I know many Jamaicans don't like to write they're very verbose. If we can get them to tell us what it is and we write it in, that's fine, but or if they complete it, that'd be great. Um, but the thing is, I noticed that I have to put some. This questionnaire is not done. I'm. I, I'll have to update it. There's a section where they have to fill in question two, three, and four. Have you personally experienced any changes in your attitudes towards Afro-Caribbean beliefs? They have to be yes or no. Okay. 
if yes please explain and you just put one or two lines um one or two lines and i understand that some jamaicans are not but because the nature of the study we have to have qualitative data as well and um and we have to, hopefully they can make um it's brief we do we can put two or three lines for them to write they don't have to give us anything long they could put two words oh um my exposure to Karl Marx that's it um oh my exposure to HBO um my that's it you know what I mean stuff like that whatever the case might be are there any specific events influence your attitude blah 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 so on until for it um do you believe that Afro-Caribbean beliefs should be recognized and protected as part of Jamaican cultural heritage oh please explain it should be if yes oh no it doesn't matter this is a, it's not that if if they say yes or no it still requires a response please explain so we have to okay so we have to correct this so questions two three and four on the section four is missing some lines so we have to add those lines so i have to go and go back and add those lines section five is optional um is it optional political affiliation and then um is there anything else you would like us to sh you would like to share about your attitudes or your experiences related to afro-caribbean beliefs yes or no if yes please state below and they can state that or anything that they have if anything that they have shared like questions two three or four they could use that section to complete but i'm not going to do that i'm going to have to update this and add the lines so guys i'm gonna have to update this question here again because the lines are missing from sections two three or four and then i say thank you for taking the time to complete this questionnaire your responses will be valuable for understanding the changing attitudes towards afro-caribbean beliefs in jamaica um and that's that's it now there is some study notes as it relates to this questionnaire by the way i will have to update the questionnaire but it doesn't matter i am redoing this questionnaire on a type on a google form document that allows me to send it out and for you guys to pull it and just click 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 type in and send back okay so it's um i'm you guys will get that uh chantel and i will work on it sometime this evening tonight and we will send it out to you guys between today and tomorrow Probably more than we, I was hoping tonight, but because I noticed that I there's one more edition, I need to correct something on it. You guys will have to wait for that until tomorrow before I send that out. But here are some notes for you guys. Jamaica religious traditions have rich and diverse, have a rich and diverse history, particularly within Afro-Caribbean communities. And I think I shared this last week. But um, only volumes was here for that class. Karen wasn't here or missed out, and um, and Howard was bit, uh, was in a meeting. So I shared this last week that Jamaican religious traditions have a rich and diverse history, particularly within Afro Caribbean communities. When over seven hundred and fifty thousand African captives were brought to Jamaica from regions such as the Bight of Biafra, present day Ghana and west central africa during the late 18th century during the late 18th century a variety of african and african influenced religious practices began to emerge began to emerge um we talked about dotty bookman earlier he came from um Gam senegal um to jamaica in the 1700s early 1700s um through slavery and then he escaped and went to to haiti and he was um he was one of the founders of obia in um, apart he developed obia in jamaica before he went to haiti and developed voodoo and so one of the things we said i mean there must be a, a correlation between voodoo and haiti because when the slaves came to the Caribbean, um, some of the people who came to the Caribbean left and went to Haiti. And, and I wondered if whether the he, voodoo, Obia was not fully developed. Voodoo wasn't fully developed 
in Jamaica. So we got a form of voodoo, uh, which was Obia. And by the time the slaves, uh, or Dottie Bookman went to Haiti, he fully, he finished it, perfected it into the voodoo that they had in, in, into, the, into Ghana. Um, but we also learned that he was also able to read the Quran. And there were many Africans that came to the new, to slaves who came to the Caribbean, to Jamaica, who were versed in the Quran. Dottie Bookman was one of them. He was a very tall and strapping and strong, obviously educated man. Okay, the fact that he could read Quran and so on. And they started Obi and then not only that, helped to help to spur on the Haitian revolution. So when you study that kind of history, you can you get and when we further on when I do, when I talk when I read these notes you will hear me talk about an Af a religion of resistance and how African religions were not embraced or encouraged by the Europeans be, who were who colonizers because African religions were seen as a way of exposing the slaves making the slaves more aware as a way of uh, was was more seen as resistance okay resistance and so it was eschewed it was not encouraged in a sense um but anyways but let us continue so one of the prominent traditions is obia obia one of the prominent prominent traditions caribbean afro religious tradition uh, uh, is obia which serves as a system of herbal and spiritual technology used for various purposes when oh sorry um obia practitioners obia practitioners obia practitioners which serves as a system sorry obia practitioners often refer to to as readers you know, call for the reader man all the practitioners often referred to as readers are skilled herbalists sought after for healing for healing physical spiritual and mental disorders as well as protection protection from malevolent or bad spiritual forces obia was all, okay, and just here you talk about Christianity, the angel of the Lord and campus round about them that fear him. So, you know, all religions, they and, and so on, they have, there is always this religion of protection. So even the Africans with their obia or the Afro-Caribbean with their obia, obia also was a religion, okay, also spoke to the, spoke to the issue of protection and healing. Okay, physical healing, spiritual and mental disorders, as well as protection from bad spirits, from demons and devils. Yet still, many people thought that would, would refer to Obia and the reader, men and people who practice such religions, the Europeans or those who are of a Eurocentric bent, those who are Eurocentric, they all the Africans, they are devilish and demons, yet the same Africans had Obia or who in the Caribbean and Obia was used to to uh, to guard against the bad spirits. Obia was also historically associated with slave resistance and revolt. Slave resistance and revolt. Obia. So of course, Europeans look down on Obia. Of course, it wasn't. They were. They came to Christianize, anyways. And now here we are bringing. Here they are bringing their obia or African religion. We are re, here. We are inventing the Caribbean, okay, in in a demi or a half bred European nations or states, because in one sense they want you to be like them, but in another sense you can never be like them. That is why Fanon says we are. Um, the colonial man or post-colonial must always be aware, is constantly aware of his image, okay? But Obia was historically associated with slave resistance and revolt. 
with beliefs in the in its practitioner's ability, with its practitioner's ability to poison and dominate others through the manipulation of shadows. The manipulation of shadows. Some researchers trace the origins of Obia to the Ashanti people. So if I ask you in the exam, okay, Obia, Obia, uh, the origins of Obia. Some researchers trace the origins of Obia to what people? The Ashanti people, okay? From where? Present day Ghana and their practice of Obayifo. And just so you know, a lot of Jamaicans live in Ghana today. A lot of Jamaicans live in Ghana. Um, a lot of Jamaicans live in Ghana. Now, another significant Jamaican religious tradition is Jamaican revivalism. Jamaican revivalism, also known as Pokomania. So, just so you know, I have Pokomania on there and revivalism. But um, there are some Jamaicans who will say that they practice Pokomania as against revivalism. Revivalism. So, I deliberately put revivalism and Pokomania. Pokomania. Now, again, another significant Jamaican. Say, if I say to you, name three Jamaican religious tradition, indigenous religious tradition. Of course, we know we talk about um, Obia. Yes. Now we're talking about Jamaican revivalism. Oh, okay. Also, not Baptist, not Church of God. Okay. Not Baptist, not Church of God. We're talking about Jamaican religious tradition that is of that is indigenous to carry to Jamaica and to Caribbean, and that is of the African influence, okay? Also known as Pokomania. Now, this tradition is more structured than Obia. Again, if I were to ask you, what is, what is the difference between revivalism as against Obia? Obia, right, revival, revivalism, sorry, is more structured, is more structured than Obia. And it exhibits similarities with Haitian voodoo. So isn't that quite interesting that if I were to ask you, which of these practices are more similar in nature to Jamaican revivalism? Obia or Haiti or Haitian voodoo? What would you say? Hello? Repeat the question, sir. Is it Obia or? Which of these traditions are closest to Jamaican revivalism? And that's, you mean between Obia and which one? Between Obia and Haitian voodoo, which is, the, which of, which is similar to Jamaican revival, is more similar to, Jamaica, to Jamaican revivalism. Obia or Haitian voodoo? Sure. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. So I would have to look at the one that, that, that probably burns the candles, beat, beats, beat, beat the drums, um, as the water on the table dances and marches around the table, probably has their head wrapped up with a ruler or something or a pencil underneath. Um, because I know for revivalism, it, it includes a lot of those um, elements. So Okay, well, you don't have to go far. You can just... Listen to what I, I, I yeah, do. Sir, the thing is about Obia and Obia in Jamaica. You know? Obia is a thing that people used to hide and do. So it's not like something that was out in the public that a person could just look at and say, uh, there goes a Obia man. People used to just speculate and hear persons saying, you know, this man went to a Obia man, this woman went to a Obia man and they are working Obia and this person. But you would have ne you, you, you haven't seen like it's being practiced in an open space. So this question would be really very difficult 
to answer. Well, I give you the an- I just gave you the answer just now. I was I was trying to say to you, I am I asked the question because I just said it. I said another significant Jamaican religious tradition is Jamaican revivalism, also known as Pokomania. Right. Now, this tradition, this tradition, Jamaican revivalism, which is also known as Pokomania. Oh. Yeah. Go, go ahead, sir. This tradition, it is more structured than Obia, and it exhibits similarities with Haitian voodoo. I just oh. said that. That's why I asked. I'm saying that because it's going to be on the exam. I guess okay? that over my head, sir. Yeah, man. So the answer to that question is Haitian voodoo. Okay. Haitian voodoo, Jamaican revivalism, okay, exib- um, exhibit, exhibit similarities with Haitian voodoo, just so you know that, okay? Guys, ha- please take a note, sir, sir. All right, Jamaican revivalism, also known as Pokomania, exhibits similarity. It's more structured than Obia. It is more structured, structured, than obia because okay what you just said just now okay you just said karen which was perfect um the the way how the way obia is practiced in jamaica it is not practiced in a structured form but guess what i just said that do you remember i said jamaican revivalism also known as pokamania is more structured than obia so obia doesn't really have a structure per se as you said so you're right okay but another thing about jamaican revivalism also known as Pokomania, it exhibits similarities with Haitian voodoo. Okay. Haitian voodoo. So a lot of, so you want to know, so you want to understand, so, uh, so voodoo comes from our voodoo, our obia, okay, looks, is a, is a form of Haitian voodoo, but it's not in its purest form. It is a dwarfed, it is a dwarfed version and a less developed aspect of Haitian voodoo. Because if you study the travel of Dotty Buckman to Haiti, the fact that he helped to start voodoo in Jamaica, Obia, and then he went to Haiti and, con- and, and did voodoo, uh, sorry, started Obia, went to Haiti and started voodoo. Vo- the in- okay, and however, he left Jamaica abruptly. So he didn't get a chance to to finish developing voodoo. So what we have was a version. So by the time he get to Haiti, he fully completed the development of of that practice into what it was meant to be, into voodoo. Now, Jamaican revivalism, we say, Jamaican revivalism actually resembles that of Haitian voodoo. So if I were to ask you, do we have what, what, so if I were to ask you, what tradition, is there any Jamaican tradition that is similar or exhibits similarity with Asian voodoo over anything else? Yes, Jamaican revivalism. Go to a Jamaican revivalist church. Maybe that's what you, as a homework for you guys to do. Visit a Jamaican, I visited one. <laughs> okay, visit a revivalist church. But you guys are... <laughs> You got wait, Karen. You are laughing. This is exactly why we are doing this study. Why you laugh? <laughs> Sir, we, we, we know the stigma attached to. Next thing I go to church, that church, and people start spreading rumors at me. Yeah. That, that, okay, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, how we have been so colonized in this Eurocentric tradition to easily accept European or you European stuff and european identity over our own stuff we have always been taught that way and now we people but sir think, sir yes. my, my teaching comes right down to the bible you know and and if for any reason at all the, yes. a, a, a person's practice of worship deviates any at all from that which the bible would have prescribed and i'm not there i'm not gonna subscribe to that and um, so Karen, we put- you <laughs> have missed all the classes in this course, which I it's just a pity that you went you don't listen to some of the discussions, what we said about the Bible. Okay, 
Okay, it's a pity that you you haven't said about the Bible. I, 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 may, I may need to go back, sir. Yes, I, I, I need you because we have said, we said history is a result of the varieties of human nature and circumstance. Yes, mm -hmm. we talked about Jews for Jesus and Jews not for Jesus. We talk about, um, even, you know, we talk about Jews, Jesus disc not discrediting the Gentiles but not discrediting the Jews, but yet still formulated a religion for the Gentiles who were said to be without religion, who were said to be without any God, without any hope. So he now formulates a new message to them. Kant says, we, you know, history is a result of the varieties of human nature and circumstance. And I won't get back into that because we've spent a lot of time discussing this in the entire class from lecture one, lecture two. I want you to go back and listen to the lectures. And I, if you go into the WhatsApp group, I sent it. We talked about the Bible and the, the issue of privilege, the issue of the Bible. The Bible is the book that represents that is still represents a religion from a European perspective dominated by a history that is riddled with privilege. I have said that for us here studying Caribbean theology, even your, okay, even your when Christopher Columbus and the Europeans came here, they came here to Christianize and they came here with gold. I mean, to find gold. For the Roman Catholic Church and for the nobles. Okay. We have talked about that. We have talked about the issue of privilege. We have talked about the issue of Augustine and how his writings were included within the catechisms of the church they were not seen as normative but when they realized how it could embellish the christian faith because we talk about in the in the in the development of christianity and in the develop in throughout the period of the world there was fierce competition between various religious groups for dominance to the point where even in christianity which was not any religious institution was given a Roman identity. So Christianity was Roman. The Christianity that we have today is not the Christianity that we have that was practiced many years ago. Okay? The Christianity that we that we have inherited from Christ is not the Christian. And then of course many people have come up with their different denominations and versions of that. So that we now have a competitive and a capitalistic nature of scripture. And then people exceptional, and then we have exceptionalized it. We have exceptionalized it. Exceptionalized our position. I say to you again, history is a result of the varieties of human natures and circumstances. But I won't get into that too much. Okay, because the very same thing that you are still, because we, I said to you, the Africans had their Muslims book, Muslim book. They had their religions and their book, but we still accept that we talked about last week Rastafarianism. Why the Rast? We're going to talk about this later on um, as we move further. It is still it still remains the same because the, what we call the Bible today is not one book; it's diff several diff sixty-six books broken up in two different parts. In fact, one whole religion practices one part; another religion practices another part based on their privileges and based on their on their cultures and their goals their natures and their cultures and so i and, and by the way i put in the group there's a lecture that we did um should god be universal should god be universal or is god cultural I, i'm gonna ask you guys to go back and watch those you know we're not saying that i'm not discrediting what you are saying but what I'm saying to you, we are saying here, we are showing how religion come down to us from our African heritage and from our European heritage. 
but we have accepted the European over our African heritage, which affects us in many ways than one. Okay, so so not only so we in we have inherited a European heritage, and then we also utilize a scripture that we are not totally agreed on because some of us accept the apocryphal books, and some of us don't. Some of us accept the apocryphal book because it doesn't go coinc- it doesn't go in line with our understanding of our eschatology. The, e- the eschatology, what happens to man after he dies? Or it, it deviates. They say, oh, it doesn't, we don't include the apocryphal books because it doesn't, it, it kind it challenges the totality of scripture because that is human beings. Man speaks from his subjective. But no, but we said no. So we take out that part that does not speak to the un- to the scriptures as we see it in totality to make sure that it speaks to a particular goal. Okay? But guess what? We don't think like that because if we think it like that, we're going to commit heresy or we are heretic. <laughs> okay? There are, in fact, or we are engineered to think like that, not to challenge anything, to be simpletons so that we can be complicit in our takeover, so that we can be complicit in our colonization, so that we can be complicit, okay, in, how, in the stigmas that we apply to our own heritages and our own practices, discrediting the um, practices based on things that we have determined to be normative through our colonization, which we have either accepted as a, mission, as a missionary response based in colonization, based in the Crusades. But I invite you to go back. We won't delve into that too much because we delve into that last week, looking at um, the scriptures and so forth. Um, one of the, no, and I'm going to talk about this in a little bit more, the same thing about the Bible and so on. One of the prominent traditions, so we said this over, Obia was historically associated with slave resistance. Obia was historically associated with slave resistance and revolt with beliefs in its practitioner's ability to poison and dominate others through the manipulation of shadows. Some researchers trace the origins of Obia to the Ashanti people of present-day Ghana and their practice of Obia. Now, another significant or Oba, Oba Yifo, another significant Jamaican religious tradition is Jamaican revivalism, also known as Pokomania. This tradition is more structured than Obia and exhibits similarities with Haitian voodoo. It incorporates elements of West African and Haitian religions. Again, revivalism incorporates what? Elements of what? Western African and what? Haitian religions with various spirits venerated in the tradition being associated with specific foods and colors and music. Rituals often involve drumming and dancing, trance-like states allowing contact between worshipers and spirits for divine healing or inspiration. While the Holy Spirit is said to possess devotees in revivalist traditions, spirits of biblical figures like Jeremiah and Peter are also invoked. So they also use biblical traditions because African tradition was not void of a particular experience of the Old Testament. People talk about the African, some people say the Africans were the original Hebrew people. The Africans were the original Hebrew people. You know, people talk about that. We don't know. This. But when you start to read history, you'll see how the history has been complex. It's been it's very complex when you start to really sit down and revisit history. But we can either allow people to do history for us. When you realize history is a result of the varieties of human nature and circumstances steeped in subjectivity. Which, which promotes a particular privilege and culture over others, then you will get to, okay, when you look at the interpretational issues that people have, which creates hundreds of denominations today and religion. We have many religions because many religions come from different cultures. 
And now we live in the 21st century in a global, and as we stem towards globalization and a global village, a world that becomes one and domination and conquest of the people through their human egos, flex their understanding and their privileges and their cultures over others in order to dominate the narrative. Now, perhaps the most well-known Jamaican religious tradition is Rastafarianism, which emerged, which emerged. Now let's talk about Rastafarianism. The most well-known Jamaican religious tradition is Rastafarianism, which emerged during the Depression years of the 1930s. It is, a, a note, again, it started when? In the 1930s. It, it emerged in the 1930s. So if I were to ask you, Rastaf the, Rastafari the Rastafarian, Rastafarianism emerged when? What years? The, during the depression years of the 1930s. It is complex. It is a complex spiritual and political movement that combined Jamaican folk Christianity with pan-Africanist sentiments. Again, it combined spiritual and political movement, spiritual and political. Notice um, Bob Marley in Who Shot the Sherry says, we're not ras, we're not, oh, we don't look to capitalism and we don't look to Marxism, okay? We look, oh, I am Rasta, I look to Rasta. He does not look for, for okay, there's the Rasta man salvation. The Rasta man, the black man who is Rasta, who was formerly colonized and oppressed and treated as nothing. He has no religion. He has no language. He has no culture. Or if he does have anything, it is devilish and demon. And so we have to change him up. Bring him on our side. Change his thinking. Okay? Enslave him. That man, now we, that Rasta man who is now more empowered. So I don't look to the East. I don't look to the West. I don't look to the Soviets. I don't look to the Americans. I don't look to the Europeans. I look to the eye and I. <laughs> I'm not a raster, just so you know. I look to, okay. That was a powerful statement. It was quite powerful. He, okay, and that he does not look to a system that is of a Babylonian system for religious value. One that demeans him, he looked to something else. It is a complex spiritual political movement, Rastafa, um, um, religious movement that combines Jamaican folk Christianity with an African sentiment, influenced by who? Marcus Garvey's United Negro Improvement Association. But Marcus Garvey will tell you he was not Rasta, he was a, of the Judeo Christian bent. Okay? But Part of his teachings, part of his teaching was included. Rastafarians reject British colonialism and draw, again, Rastafarians reject what? British colonialism. They reject it. So if they reject British colonialism, of course, they reject also a European Christianity. A European Christianity. And, they, and draw inspiration from Ethiopia. Now, if I ask you, what is so wrong about that? Now, I am not saying that when I ask you that question, I'm facilitating the course, facilitate Caribbean. I have my position on these things. When I facilitate the course, I'm facilitating the course critically so that you critically think about these things. When we talk about people's stigma, where does that stigma come from? You have given me one of the answers already. Okay? From an inherited notion about scriptures. Okay, which is made, which is made, which is made into a kind of science, which is made to have a kind of scientific appeal, authority, authority, the issue of authority, so as to solidify its position over anything else and to give credence to the particular faith. That, com that is competing for dominance with other faith, 
other cultures and other traditions. European cultures is the best culture, a culture stemming from the Greco-Roman world. When you read the Bible, the only, you don't see anything about Africa except Ethiopia. I wonder why. Or if, okay, or if the Bible speaks about Africa, they are always heathens. It is a complex, okay, so I need to understand clearly. I've said a very, the point I have made is very deep. Let's let that set, sink in for a little bit. When the Europeans came here, they not only were they promoting their culture, but part, okay, but, but part of culture is they were also, they came here to promote Christianity as if, as if they, as if the people in other parts of the world don't have, don't have religion. As if people in other, as if people in part, in other parts of the world don't have connection with a God that relates to them in their, based on their own cultures, based on their own context. <laughs> Rastafarians <laughs> reject British colonialism and draw inspiration from Ethiopia, the only African land mentioned in the Bible. They believe Haile Selassie, the 20th century emperor of Ethiopia, known as the Lion of Judah. To be the 225th king of biblical Ethiopia. So Rastafarians adopted the name Rastafari, which means Prince of Tafari province, as their own. Some Rastafarians have even settled in Ethiopia, Ghana, and Zaire, fulfilling the dream of a return to Africa. Rastafarians interpret the Old Testament as the history of black people, Rastafarians interpret their theology, their theology of the Old Testament as the history of black people and view themselves as successors to biblical prophets. They often speak, you talk about people talk about black Jesus, having a black Jesus. So some people, they believe in the Bible, but everything for them is black because they're trying to make it, they're trying to, that's the bring it into the so as so that the Bible speaks to them as an individual. They often speak as the present day voices of prophets like Moses. By the way, I'm making a point. God is done. And we said earlier that God is what than that which nothing greater can be conceived or imagined. God is beyond you. You know, I am going to read, reread the introduction to a lecture that I spoke that I published, which I, I know none of you have read it and none of you have watched it, maybe, maybe one or two, of, maybe one of you, but I'm going to reread that because it's very important that I read it. Very important. We say that God is than that which nothing greater can be, but okay, if he's greater than us, and if God is unlimited, but we are limited, and he speaks to us in our limitations, why, okay, you must be God. To, you, then you are God. You, it is as if God cannot speak to us. In other words, when you, when you present to me an understanding of God, are you speaking out of your limitations? Okay, fine. We say that God is unlimited and God is beyond us. But God relates to us based on the law of thermodynamics in our own space based on our own limitations and we formulate an understanding based on our own limitations of god we don't we can't see a god that speaks to us and we said that in the last class speak to chantel in the way that he wants chantel to, to understand him we, we god is not that great to do that then what that i mean and then god goes to rolians and god and guess what god is God knows everything. He knows how he made Roliams and the uniqueness of Roliam. And everybody must work out their own salvation. So he speaks to Roliam based on Roliam's context and who he made 
volume to be so that the understanding that he have of God is the understanding that God provides him based on his own context and what he is going through in his own cultures and life. But then volume take it and then say, hey, no, this is how it should be. And then become prophet and lead the people and, and develop importance. Anyways, I mean, let me not get into trouble. Or he goes to Howard and does the same thing. So now that then when all of you come back to me and say, let's, oh, we, oh, God showed up to me, to, showed up, spoke with me today, Ronaldo. Then Williams, God showed up with me today, when, um, Ronaldo, Howard. God so, spoke with me. And then I said, okay, God spoke to all of you today. What did he say to you? Or how, what is your understanding? And all of you give me three different Chantel God, Rolliam God, Howard God. And, and then all of a sudden, Chantel started saying, no, 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 no. He could not have said that to you. This, mine is more important because I, it was inspired in a certain way. I was on the moon. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> then I'm said, no, 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 no. Mine is more important because I was X, Y, Z. We, okay, because we are so, because human beings, I'm writing a book about privilege, power, and position. Privilege, and I'm looking at from the very foundation of life, how men, or we have this tendency to privilege ourselves, the selfishness, the competition, the competitiveness and the drive that we have. Turning the gospel and the faith and God into franchise. Turning, limiting him based on your own understanding and your own revelation that he gives to you as if God can't re reveal himself to me based on where I am in another context. We have already said, cohito ego sum. From Descartes, I think, therefore, I am. No man can know for certain anything, but one thing you, you, can, you can know for certain is the thinking mind, that thinking about yourself. So, okay. This is important. I know I said to people, okay, fine, let's just look at Jesus. Jesus went beyond himself. Jesus denied his deity. Jesus denied his deity. His godliness. Jesus never had to go on the cross. But that, if that is what it takes for the greatest miracle, what is it for all men to, to live one, to live as one? What is the ultimate of all things? That we become one with reality, with all of our individuality. Okay. And so in order for God to bring all men to himself, he gets what? He took on humanity. In order for the, the New Testament church, I want, I mean, as I, 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 Christians, are we looking at that? In order for the Christians to come, okay, to become one, in order for New Testament, New Testament to join up forces with Baptists or to, to, to realize the ultimate of all things, they may have to go outside of, the, they, they have to step outside of something. None of them now do that. But God did it when he came in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. And gave up his divinity and gave up his and became weak. In fact, that is the very same reason why Jews don't accept Jesus. They can't accept a Jesus that is weak. Okay. And then you go to um you read um uh, you read um Plato, uh, sorry, the Iliad and Homer and the Greeks, the early history and old traditions. Their Jesus, their hero was a warrior hero, Hercules. Then Sappho and Din, Din Pindar, right? Oh no. Oh, I see my, my Jesus or my hero as one of love. Based on what was going on in their experiences, they took on a kind of hero, a kind of God that speaks to their experience. Rastafarian, Rastafarians often speak as the present day voices of prophets like Moses, Joshua, and Isaiah. The distinctive Rastafarian hairstyle, which is dreadlocks, symbolizes the lion's mane and the strength of the biblical figure, Samson. Rastafarians believe that African warriors also wore their hair in a similar style. The sacramental use of marijuana among Rastafarians is considered to bring divine inspiration, cure diseases, 
and enhance strength. Let's talk about marijuana for just one second. Rastafarians in Jamaica have always said that um, outside of the divine part, they have always talked about the input um, for marijuana is 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 um, is very important as medicinal drug to curing diseases, help with mental health, and and so on and so forth. But Rastafarians and many Jamaicans are looked down upon. Okay, or or some European Jamaicans. <laughs> okay look down upon it as something else but now you okay you find what's going on in um, in america today no no science come come around and they make it illegal and i know in the u.s that it's big business they're making billions of dollars trillions of dollars of marijuana for medicinal purposes i'm not and i'm not talking about street weed i'm talking about marijuana as a drug here in the US and how it's utilized for cancer patients, people with dementia and various sicknesses, it is being used. When Rastafarians had already said that a long time ago, when Jamaicans could have been, could have developed this into something profitable, we allow our European religion, which was also a strategy to make us into obedient simpletons, to make us obey and to limit the competition. Then they turn around, baptize it into science, and now it's great. And they're making money off it. In the United States, Rastafarianism is widely associated with its reggae music, which carries the rhythm and message of the tradition. Reggae lyrics often express social protest and the longing to return to the biblical Ethiopia. Rastafarianism, through its cultural expressions and resistance to Eurocentric Jamaican and American cultures, affirms African identity and serves as a form of protest even today, even today. And I will uh, stop there. And you know what? I have to, I have to, there's a lecture that I, I think I sent this lecture to you guys and I'm gonna copy it. Oh no, I sent it to you guys already. And I also, I also have it as an essay in the neoliberal.com. You guys don't follow my stuff, man. The neoliberal.com. Support Caribbean and Caribbean people's businesses and stuff. Okay, support Jamaican stuff. Some Jamaican business. Support, watch. You're even in this class and you don't even watch this amazing video which got over 10,000 views. That meant it's trending all over the world. A lecture that I gave in to this class. And you guys I don't even know what's going on. This class, it's called, I, I lecture that I gave, it says Caribbean theology. Should theology transcend culture? Is God universal? This was from last week's class, you know. This is from last week's class. Is everybody in the class? I see Howard. Where is Karen here? I'm still here, sir. Karen? Karen left, sir. Okay, I was gonna read it just for him because um, read this. Are you seeing my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What are you seeing? Part of it. Are you seeing Caribbean theology to theology transcends culture? No. Okay, let me stop share then. Is God universal? Yes, I see part of it. All right, I'm gonna share it in a second. Oh, Karen is not here. Why did Karen leave? What's going on? Chantel, can you call Karen for me? What's going on? He asked the question and I re responded to the question that he's asking. I mean, it's a deep response. I wonder if he understands the point I'm making. Okay. Um, I, I don't understand. This is exactly what's going on. Um, this, is not, this is part of the issue. Uh, a, partic a class like this is a critical class that speaks to deep issues and he's not, and he leaves the class. I just, I'm not understanding what's going on. I am, I am easy, but I'm not that easy. I take exceptions to students who come to my class and leave when they want to. I say something in the class and they can't answer the question because they're not following. I take exception to that. 
He has not submitted one paper. I feel disrespected as this professor and, 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 and this particular class. I will not, I don't fail students. I do not like to fail students. I've never failed a student except one in my entire years of teaching, which every day I talk about it. I hate it so badly. But I do not, I do not, I'm telling you, I am easy, but I'm not that easy. I'm Jamaican. Okay. Sorry, sir. It says it will, it will, it will lock back in because its phone was there, shut off or something like that. I, w I want the students to take this class seriously. Easier, sir. Sir, sir, I do take the class seriously. My device died. Uh, my laptop broke two weeks ago. So I'm, no, I'm lashing out right now. It's not just for today. I just do not think that you guys have taken this course seriously. I'm being honest. I have written stuff, submitted it to you guys. You guys don't. Fine, you guys can't come. I deliberately don't have class. I say, okay, go and send you readings and stuff to do. Because I understand you guys, you know, I, I said to my, one of my friends today, men are different when it comes down to academia and stuff. So I try to tailor make the class to give you as much latitude. And even that is not working. Sir, so we read them, you know. I read, I read what you send and I submit my papers. I wrote and submitted this lecture, which I was, this was a powerful lecture on Caribbean theology. Should theology transcend culture? I published it in several journal articles. It's in the Gleaner as well. It's in the Jacobin magazines as well. And some of you don't have access to it. So I published it in my own website because many Jamaicans and Caribbean people don't have access to the Jacobins. So I published it in um, the neoliberal journals at the neoliberal.com and renaldocmackenzie.com. And also it's on YouTube and the podcast. It's a powerful lecture. I said, if God is universal, can we contend for a theology of God that transcends culture? Again, if God is universal, can we contend for a theology of God that's universal, that transcends culture? How, and, and if you, and that, that was the, that, that topic we discussed this, was it last week or week before? If God is universal, can we contend for a theology of God that transcends culture? No, if I, I mean, that could be an, an exam question. I mean, and I, you know, I don't know how many of you watched the video and listened to it, but this is from the, this is from what I did. I, the lecture that we did, I went back and summarized the whole thing and, and I sent it to you guys to make it available. I have been working. Sir, I sent you two private messages. Can you respond to me? I'm back in the, in the message, please. This so what we will do, all you got, so I want, what is it that you sent me? So Mackenzie? Sir? Yes, what were you saying? I sent it to, I sent it to you to um, direct messages. Can you respond back to them directly to me, please? Back in the, oh, back in the chat. Uh, Okay, okay. Um, I'll respond shortly. For my students, it's cheaper, okay? Okay, just, so thank you. For my students, it's just... Anyways, there yeah. is one final consideration based on Teron's question earlier. Last week, we discussed this at length. And I shared... Uh, I'm going to send the, a copy of the, um, let me share the screen. I'm going to share my screen because I want you guys, there is a very powerful lecture that we did last week, which I really want you guys to get into. Why can't I share my screen? I just don't understand. Um, I have too many things open. All right, let me try sharing it again. I'm going to share this. Um, it's actually available in the neoliberal.com. Let's go to the neoliberal.com. Uh, here we go. Now, this is not the one. One of the central themes uh, should... Uh, hold on. Uh, here we go.
Ah, uh, here we go. Here we go. Here. What is question? Um, impose a reality of God. One of the central themes. Blah blah blah. Human drives and the search for truth. I don't like this. I'm okay. Let me go to. It. There's. I'm gonna read something, but I thought I. I did. I have something on the a critical examination of theology and culture. But I don't like it. I prefer this version that I have here. This version is much better. All right. So now I can share. I have a lot of stuff opened up. That's the problem. Uh, I'm going to share this screen. Where is the video? Caribbean. Ah, here we go. Caribbean theology. Share. Okay, great. Um, this is this was a three-hour lecture from last, I think, from this class, I think, from your class. But I summarized it, and I said that uh, if God is universal, can we contend for a theology of God that transcends culture? However, Kant said that history is a result of the varieties of human natures and circumstances and throughout history. Man has imposed an idea of God that caters to his privileges, con privileges, context, and goals. This is important. Listen to this. Muta, Muta Baruka, Muta Baruka said that God is a human creation. Meaning what? That the way we understand God is the way human have determined that we see God. Again, Muta Baruka said that God is a human creation, meaning what? When somebody says something, you say, what do you mean by that? Meaning the way we understand God is the way humans have determined that we see God. Stroking human egos, yet, yet, Paul Tillich, Paul Tillich, Paul Tillich declared that God is what? God is man's ultimate concern and possesses that internal drive which predisposes him to a reality of God, to a reality of God that is deep, which has always escaped him so that he live so that we live our lives pursuing the existence of God through worship faith or some transcendental experience transcendental experience that is beyond us this is important just as human drives human the id the ego and the super ego just as human drives the id, the ego, and the superego, speaking psychologically. Notice how Caribbean theology, and I'm your professor, so I'm a student of liberal arts and liberal studies. Liberal arts lifts, speaks to issues or lifts up things that, or speaks to issues of ethics and human values, and in more ways than one is interdisciplinary. So a lot of my studies have been interdisciplinary philosophy, sociology, economics, psychology, so on as interdisciplinary. So, so part of my understanding is provides an interdisciplinary approach to Caribbean theology. So I said, just as based on Paul Tillich's declaration of God being man's ultimate concern, possessing that internal drive which predisposes him to a reality of God that is deep, which, which has always escaped him, so that he, we now live our lives pursuing the existence of God through worship, faith, or some transcendental experience. Just as human drives, human drives, the id, the ego, or the superego, using psychology, Sigmund Freud, just as human drives lead him or her to contend with the truth of his own existence within what multiple realities of time and space 
which extends beyond the world, he or she, human, we find ourselves in the outer space, in outer space, outside of space, outer space. Now, human beings are always working to discover something. Human beings, we are always working to discover something. Something beyond ourselves, either within or without. And find themselves traveling as far as to the moon in hopes of finding truth that extends from the limitations of life on earth or within his personal domains. Yet Descartes philosophizes that. Descartes ph philosophizes that what we know for certain is not beyond the subjective. It's not beyond the subjective. Nevertheless, man has imposed, nevertheless, although man knows that, he imposes a reality of God that is universal and objective in the hopes of advancing a life that places him or her above the rest. Let that sink in. Again, let me, let me say that again. Descartes philosophizes that what we know for certain, for certain, is not beyond this objective. I think, therefore, I am. Nevertheless, I am saying this. Nevertheless, while we know that man has still want, gone ahead to impose a reality of God that is universal and objective in the hopes of doing what? Advancing a life that places him or her above the rest. Co so, colonization. We say that life is about people and how they relate. Yet, life is what people make of it and how human tendencies to promote self has created dynamics coached in the universal creation of a God that exceptionalizes his personal experiences and cultures and go as far as to discredit others and perspectives of God that compete with his position and place in life. That's a mouthful, that's a lot, and that is deep. Again, yet, we say that life is about what? Life is about what? People and how they relate, yet. Life is what people make of it and human tendencies to promote self has created dynamics, dynamics, the dynamics of life, how we relate, positions and so on, and spaces, blah, blah, blah coached, placed in the universal creation of a God that exceptionalizes his personal experiences and cultures and go as far as to discredit, to discredit and to deny other ideas and perspectives of God that compete with his position and place in life. To challenge the Bible, but was to challenge the king and his position and vice versa. Now, this has led to the, con to the conquests and crusades. This has led to conquests and crusades and the destruction of cultures, the destruction of cultures where some with a westernized theology of God created a new world in the eyes of their perspectives. The Europeans went to Africa and the Caribbean to spread religion in the name of a God. A particular way of life and to take away the prospects of others which they justify in that faith, in that same faith they have come to promote. Discrediting those who have found God for themselves. Walter Rodney wrote how Europe underdeveloped Africa, yet Europeans justify their efforts based in a theology that is exceptional and one that promotes their cultures and ways over others. 
was it not Balfour in Cromer that said in English Parliament in the 1600s that England knows what is best for Egypt and that if anything good came out of Egypt, it is a result of the English who brought religion to Africa as if what the Egyptians and Africans had were primitive or devilish. So we speed forward to today and question how our theology comes from a legacy that creates a way of life that limits any plausible resistance to domination and control for such was the strategy that led to the takeover. Using a religion from a particular space that creates obedience or obedience to a law steeped in a conspiracy that ensures willing companions who are easily controlled But Caribbean theology critically re-examines the history of a theology that is devoid of our legacies outside of European experiences. In the lecture that I'm referencing last week, discussions in Caribbean theology, the students using Caribbean theologians, such as Lewin Williams, Reverend Garnet Roper, and others, critically examined the top-down theology that has created these dynamics in life that has led to the position of man in the global sphere as against the global north and racism. As we began, one student began to share about his practice of theology as a Jamaican police educator who teaches at the Police Academy on Ethics, Howard. We ask, is there an ethics that is based in a religion from below or above? This is an interaction paper that I wrote interacting with the lecture. So you see how I delve into it? Further, Howard shares his challenge but, sir, sir, we don't have this script. I saw the video on Facebook. I, I started to listen, but the script I didn't have it. You don't have it? Um, it's no, available no, in cinemaliberal.com. But because I will when, find when you were speaking the, about oh, it, I was saying where to find it. The video is on, in the description of the video. Well, it's on Facebook. I read it and listened to it. Oh, if you listen to it on Facebook, no, you won't get it. You have to go to the um to the actual recording and read the entire, but I am going to make this available in the, in, in the neoliberal commentary. I thought I'd send it to you, I'd copy and paste it and send it to you, but if you go to YouTube right now, I'm reading from YouTube. My, my computer was corrupted and everything that I wrote was pertaining to this, disappeared, but guess what? Thank God I had inserted it into the description of YouTube and it's available. If you go to the YouTube, to the very lecture on YouTube, it's all available there. You just click on show more and it's right there. I'm reading from it. Okay. But oh, I'm going to you. make it available in LinkedIn tonight in the neoliberal commentary and also in the neoliberal post and the neoliberal journals. I, okay. Um, because I think I have it, but the way how I title it is different. Because when I, I just went to the neoliberal.com and I was reading it and it, it looked a little bit different from, from what I have here. So I will do another version of this. Um, but, um, uh, as we begin, one student asks to share about his practice of theology as a Jamaican police. We ask, is there an ethics that is based in a religion from below or above? Further, he shares his challenge in developing his theology within the cultural realities and experiences of Caribbean. We consider how Caribbean peoples themselves find suspicious any indigenous theology stemming from their own African legacy, which is largely seen as fringe, but promotes the colonizer's faith as normative. Another student discusses how he struggles with his own theology outside of a biblical understanding that we have accepted as ideal due to either a brainwashing of the exclusivity of scriptures, which continues to promote one reality over another, where man continues to stroke his egos over and over others. This was indeed a powerful session of theology at Jamaica Theological Seminary. 
the end. And um, what I will do is, you guys are saying that you guys don't have this. So this is what I will do. Control C. And stop the video. And we are done. Okay, so that is it for class today. We will definitely meet again on Thursday. I will update the questionnaire and send it out to you guys. You guys can do it online. You have to do, we're not going to do the paper for me. Okay? Forget that. Okay, don't do the questionnaire yet. We're going to do it on paper format for you guys. And you can it, you can it. Click, 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 and then one or two sections we have to do that. But, uh, what were your, what are your thoughts based on all that we've said so far? Um, yeah, a lot of information, a lot of information. I'm impressed, but 